Hi, my name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Wednesday, January 24th, and we celebrate the feast day of St. Francis de Sales, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. So, let us begin, as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O oh God, who for the salvation of souls willed that the bishop, St. Francis de Sales, become all things to all, graciously grant that, following his example, we may always display the gentleness of your charity in the service of our neighbor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the scripture. A reading from the second book of Samuel. That night, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day on which I led the children of Israel out of Egypt to the present. But I have been going about in a tent under cloth. In all my wanderings everywhere among the children of Israel did I ever utter a word to any one of the judges whom I charged to tend my people Israel to ask, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, speak thus, servant David. The Lord of hosts has this to say. It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people, Israel. I have been with you wherever you went. I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old. Since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And if he does wrong, I will correct him with the rod of men and with human chastisements. But I will not withdraw my favor from him, as I withdrew it from your predecessor Saul, whom I removed from my presence. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. Nathan reported all these words and this entire vision to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is, Forever I will maintain my love for my servant. Ever I will maintain my love for my servant. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will make your dynasty stand forever and establish your throne through all ages. Forever I will maintain my love for my servant. 
He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God, the rock that brings me victory. I myself make him firstborn, most high over the kings of the earth. Forever I will maintain my love for my servant. Forever I will maintain my love for him. My covenant, covenant with him stands firm. I will establish his dynasty forever, his throne as the days of the heavens. Forever I will maintain my love for my servant. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On another occasion, Jesus began to teach by the sea. A very large crowd gathered around him so that he got into a boat on the sea and sat down. And the whole crowd was beside the sea on land. And he taught them at length in parables. And in the course of his construction, instruction, he said to them, Hear this, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path. And the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it produced no grain. And some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit. It came up and grew and yielded 30, 60 and a hundred fold. He added, whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. And when he was alone, those present along with the 12 questioned him about the parables. He answered them, the mystery of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to those outside, everything comes in parables so that they may look and see but not perceive, and hear and listen but not understand, and hear and listen again but not perceive, in order that they may not be converted and be forgiven. Jesus said to them, do you understand this parable? Then how will you understand any of the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear, Satan comes at once and takes away the word sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground, who, when they hear the word, receive it at once with joy. But they have no roots. They last only for a time. Then, when tribulation or persecution comes, because of the word, they quickly fall away. Those sown among thorns are another sort. They are the people who hear the word, but worldly anxiety, the lure of riches, and the craving for other things intrude and choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But those sown on rich soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30 and 60 and a hundredfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today we celebrate the feast day of St. Francis de Sales, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. Francis was born in Savoy in 1567. He was ordained a priest he accomplished much for Catholic restoration in his own country. He was elected Bishop of Geneva, and he proved a true pastor to clergy and laity, educating them through writing and good works. 
and giving an example to all. He died at Lyons, or Lyons, on December 28, 1622, and was buried at Anisi, or Anichi, on January 24, 1623. So that's St. Francis de Sale, bishop and doctor. So today, in the Gospel, Jesus just doesn't share a parable, which he does sometimes. Sometimes he just gives them the parable and lets them figure it out themselves. But today he just doesn't share it, he explains it. Pay attention, all of us, right? Jesus offers a parable about seeds or the word of God. Now, note that he always uses parables that his audience relates to, things that they would be familiar with. Now, his example is about seeds being spread on various types of soils, which Jesus tells his apostles is a metaphor for those who hear it. In other words, we are a type of soil in the reception of the seed, which is the word of God or the word of Jesus. We have two things going on here. What Jesus is saying and why he's saying it. Note that's always something to look at with a parable, what he's saying and why. Um, the parable itself tells us that there are those who ignore God's word. We know that, right? Those who love God's word when it's comfortable but cannot sustain the commitment when faced with a challenge. And there are those who hear God's word and grow stronger and fuller with it. Now, Jesus doesn't even go so far as to name the things that cause soil to fail, but well, he, actually he does. He goes on to say worldly anxiety, anxiety, the lure of riches, and the craving for other things. In other words, he tells us, he lays it out in this one. In other words, the things Jesus is telling us that we should avoid are the distractions of our mortality, comfort, right? the desire for wealth, the substitution for what is temporarily comfortable in a place of something which is eternal. Why does Jesus go so far? Why does he work so hard to explain this? Why does he explain the metaphor to his disciples? Because he's a teacher, first and foremost. They refer to him as teacher. Oftentimes, Pharisees will come to him and say, Teacher, he knows the apostles will be carrying his words for years to come. And what is he doing? He's giving them the tools to explain his parables. My brothers and sisters, we should do the same for others, particularly our family, particularly our children, and anybody else whom we encounter. Amen. We have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God and the liturgy of the word. Now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, for all the pastors, priests, and deacons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that they be blessed with the zeal and the courage to proclaim the values and the obligations of our holy religion. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and representatives on the national and local levels, that their laws and their lives be an inspiration to all citizens by reflecting right reason and divine revelation. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth in particular, that they be given the encouragement and the guidance they need to resist the immoral and sinful presence of our current pagan culture. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the Holy Spirit may help us to recognize the gift of different charisms within the Christian community and to discover the richness of different traditions and rituals in the Catholic Church. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the needy, the aged, and the lonely, that they be consoled spiritually by the gifts of grace 
and also receive care, aid, and loving concern from relatives, friends, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, that they may speedily attain the blessedness of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions. For these intentions and those entered into our prayer and petition book, that they may be received and answered by our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, God of compassion, bless us by granting these common petitions. For we plead to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us come together and pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that through the sacrament we have received, we may imitate on earth the charity and meekness of St. Francis de Sales, and so attain, like him, the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. You may hear a lot of ambient noise on this recording. That's because it is pouring rain outside. So that sound that you hear that sounds like fans or blowers, that's the rain on the roof of the church and bringing nourishment to the world. Have a good day. Have a good rest of the week. We'll see you back here tomorrow for Liturgy of the Word.